Let's well, see. it's the beginning of the video where normally we would start talking to the people who are listening, and then we would record all of those things and putting at the beginning of the video, therefore calling it an intro. been introduced all right but who are we well frankly speaking mm-hmm. one might I'm assume not frank well then i'll be frank okay you know i am uh, try to be frank and earnest with all women in chicago i'm frank and in new york i'm earnest mm-hmm. but instead here today i'll be tyler mm. the worst alter ego yet so far mm. So far up until this point, because I have to be Sean. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry to have put you in this position. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But, for once, I actually have a drink this morning. Mm. It felt appropriate. What is it? Wait, why are you drinking in the morning on a podcast? Well, Well, because, as it turns out, this particular podcast... Is one that involves whiskey, as it's the Soupy Whisker Brothers podcast. Ah, yes. The Soupy Whisker Brothers. I'll be Soupy, you be Whiskers. All right. I I do have more Whiskers than you, currently. You have longer Whiskers than me. I doubt there's more of them. Well, there there has to be more for you. Your head's bigger. That doesn't count. I don't know if my lip's any bigger, though. Mm. I don't grow them out. You've never measured lips, because it sounds an awful lot like kissing. Mm Mm-hmm. Let, let, let us compare let's, lips. Let's, uh, let's uh, see who's got the bigger lips. To to give it to, like what? to make it sound even stupider, I almost used the like the, I think I can't remember if it's a Greek or Latin word for lip, and then I realized I, then I realized that would have been really bad. Because that word is well, it, because I almost said Tyler, come here, let us compare labia. That has other implications. Uh, uh, something, something for China. Anyways, what are you drinking? Um, well, first you tell me what you're drinking. Dang it! Because I'll be because I'm gonna dis- I have to, I'm gonna have to disappoint you when the time comes. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm having um, just <coughs> it. This might be a full shot. Probably not quite a full shot's worth mm-hmm. of um New Rift Distilleries. Ask its drinks bourbon, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite things of all time. Mm-hmm. Okay, <clears throat> it sounds delicious. <clears throat> so it's very good. I'm still out of whiskey. Yesterday would have been my only chance to get it, and we didn't get home too until too late. Big oof. So I'm still out of whiskey. <clears throat> um, I ran out of porter on Thursday. Oh my! Um, uh, as much as I loved my porter, I it, it finished it off. Um, uh, I'm out of milk. So you're out of milk. I'm out of milk <laughs> and porter and burp. Like, why are you even trying to live? I don't know, but like Come my quick. so my only choice for drinking would have been uh, I have some white rum. And I was like, I don't want to just drink white rum. If it was a dark rum, I'd do it. I'd, I'd drink a Jamaican rum straight, but not white rum. <clears throat> Especially not Bacardi. Ooh, no. Um, uh, like I'll, I'll use Bacardi to make a mojito. Should have made a mojito. That'd have been good. Um, uh, <laughs> I have Could stuff. Mint leaves? Huh? I have mint. Yeah. Oh, um, then uh, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. But um. Uh, and so I'm just, I'm not drinking anything at all because I didn't get a glass of water because I thought I woke up too late because I got up at like 20 till and then I sat here and did nothing for 10 minutes and I'm like oh I guess I did have time to fix a drink <laughs> I could have done that yeah <clears throat> oh well but yeah that's what I'm drinking nothing should have at least got some water I should have <clears throat> that's I always drink at least two well man I don't want to say two. Uh, more than one full glass of water before I start the show every morning because there's no way I'm I like I, 
I'm going to get in here and be like, hey, first drink of the day, a shot of whiskey. I do that. I don't. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. But when I'm done, I'm going to find something to drink and then eat some leftover Chinese. Oh, the gift that never quits giving. Mm -hmm. So. I didn't say Chinese food. Oh. Uh Well, by all means. (laughs) I'll be right over. (laughs) So we threw an audible this morning and Mm -hmm. we decided, I don't know, four minutes ago Mm -hmm. um, that like maybe we aren't quite well read enough on um the uh the the mere christianity book three that we were planning on recording today and since we're trying to really go in depth with these uh we figured we both approach it a little bit more um mm, a Espe- little bit more knowledgeable yeah, i don't know yes yeah, because we've been trying to go in depth very much oh sorry um uh especially as we get into books three and four those are really punchy Yes, um, and then while they're quite good, of course, like the rest of it is, um, it gets a lot more, <clears throat> it gets a lot heavier into the really, really important stuff. The first two books kind of, uh, kind of just give some explanations of some things, uh, which is great. But books three and four, um, mm-hmm. they tend to go a little bit deeper and get a little more into, um. It's not just to the point of like books one and two feel like theology and books three and four feel like here's how you should live your everyday life as a guideline, as a concept. And it's pretty deep. So we would rather go into that uh, a a little bit more prepared. So we threw a quick audible Mm -hmm. and we have decided to do our top five video games of all time. And I kind of wanted to do this list because um, we've now had some serious time with Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is mine and Sean's from mine and Sean's more or less from our favorite series from our favorite um, studio at least for sure mm-hmm. at least um, collectively collectively mm-hmm. um, and since that's definitely cracked my top five I've been thinking about it a little bit here and there and I figured we might as well talk about it for the first time because you and I haven't really talked about um, <clears throat> where that falls for us as far as in the all time list mm-hmm. and I figured we should talk about it, and we might as well talk about it on here, because, you know, cheap content. Might as well. Mostly as well. <clears throat> but, um, so, uh, isn't, isn't that, hold, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, isn't that an as well? Isn't that a, uh, like, a turtleneck that only you goes down your collarbones? <laughs> 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 no, but you're close. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, an ass cock that sounds I, pretty gay it's exceptionally gay if you say it like that yeah you know what I could really go for right now <laughs> <clears throat> oh boy well I've been struggling mm-hmm. for two minutes now uh, just for two minutes mm-hmm uh, because I, I think um, the way that my brain works, it doesn't. I only think about yeah exactly. <clears throat> I can only think about X amount of time. Mm-hmm. And as I was writing down this list really quickly, because I was like, I, I know what this list is, mm-hmm. and I started writing down. I was like, oh, I've written down seven names. Um, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. not how you make a top five. That is true. You have honorable and I mentions. I realize I could have honorable mentions, and I, I think we will do honorable mentions. But um, I realize that everything I'm writing down is from mostly more recent and now I'm going like surely there's something that I'd consider in, in my top five that's more from my childhood mm-hmm. and I realized that there was and I think <clears throat> I don't know I think um, my number mm-hmm. five and your number five mm-hmm. are gonna be the same but mm-hmm. unexpectedly yeah so are you going first through number five or am I you go first because I have something strange to uh, with my top five Good. So, for my number five, mm-hmm. I'd have to say for the all time list, Mega Man Legends 2. Mm. So, that game would have made it potentially even higher than my top five. And I I agree with you on that. Um, uh, so, I wound up just by sheer accident not making my top five favorite games. Rather, what I considered to be the top five games. 
So that is not necessarily games that I, in, the five games that I enjoyed more than all the other games. But what are the five greatest games of all time, <clears throat> objectively? Well, or at least, well, kind of, kind of, uh, because there's some debate about that. So my, um, uh, so it's, it's basically like, okay, I really like this game. Okay, yeah, but, you know, this game is actually somewhat derivative of this game, and, you know, this game really, actually, this other game is actually one that really popularized the, this to allow that game to be made, so this game that I really like wouldn't have existed without this game, and, and so that's mm. kind of, you know, you know, like, like, like that, so, like, that, it, that, why my list wound up being kind of like that. So, for that reason, <clears throat> my number five wound up being... Um, uh, God of War. Okay, so I really struggled with mm-hmm. which one of those to put on this list um, because mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm going to kind of go with you here a little bit too. I wrote down mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff and then I realized mm-hmm. um, I don't want to put three because I, if I were going to say, well, if you could only play five games for the rest of your life, right? Mm-hmm. My top five list wow. becomes like four from soft games <laughs> mm-hmm. and then like you know one other game and i'm like okay no i don't want to do that i don't i don't want to do that i want to um um i i, I want to pick i'm going to pick up i'm going to pick a top I sh- we should have discussed this part we didn't i'm going to pick um if, it, if if a bunch of games in the same series are just so good that i would that i would struggle to put one of them on there or i'd end up putting two of them on there i'm just going to pick one game mm-hmm. from the series yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so, mm-hmm. yes. So I put Mega Man Legends 2 because mm-hmm. I feel like out of the Mega Man franchise, which we played the crap out of, I think if I had to pick one, I would probably get the least tired of Mega Man Legends 2. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So I think I think if I'm going for my favorite games, uh, I would give this spot to maybe not Mega Man Legends 2. As much as I absolutely adore that game, yes, it may go to. It still would probably go to a Mega Man game, and it may be Mega Man X Five. That was the runner-up choice for me, and mm-hmm. I based it purely off of like Mega Man X Five. Um, was like easily the best in the X series, just by a long shot. Mm-hmm. Um, possibly, yeah, definitely better than the original set too. Um, mm-hmm. but for me. I don't think the replay value of Mega Man X5 is as high as Mega Man Legends 2. And I only say that because, obviously, we I don't even know how many times we beat Mega Man X5. I don't mm-hmm. even want to think about it. It's got to be a ton of times. Yeah. But that almost became out of, like, um, uh, it was just, like, there because there are different ways to get the new armors, and the gameplay changed completely. And this was back in the day when, like, reskinning a mm-hmm. character... Um, and giving them new stuff was was not brand new, but it was still fresh, so it felt very different. Mm-hmm. And they succeeded in really making their their core moves that's different. So I I feel like it was a it was a hard decision between X Five and Legends Two, but I feel like Legends Two is just a little bit better for me for that for um for breaking in top five saying out of sheer maybe out of sheer nostalgia I don't mm-hmm. know, but I had to go with it. And plus like. Maybe if people say the word Mega Man Legends 2 enough into the ether, then Mega Man Legends 3 will, will materialize. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> There's also that. Yeah. We can only hope and pray. We can only hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so you're saying God of War. Now, when you say God of War, do you mean the original God of War? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this one, what, it wasn't my favorite God of War game. My favorite God of War game was God of War 3. Um, uh, uh, I think I would have enjoyed the other games because I enjoyed the other games immensely, but just I just wound up because they just kept improving on the on the platform. Um, uh, I wound up enjoying each one better than the last one of all the real God of War games. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so what a dig, yeah. Um, uh, uh, and so for that reason, I wound up like not. Um. Uh, uh, yeah, so if, so I, I yeah, God of War three was my favorite God of War game to play. Uh, I think the story of the other ones for that. But I mean, because God of War, you know, I think you know, Devil May Cry came out around the same time. It may even have been older. Um, uh, Castlevania, the stylish action version of Castlevania is 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 old or is newer than that. 
not Castlevania Final itself, Light, yeah. but the Castlevania as, as a game, but it was different before. Um, uh, yeah, that stylish action games were always a lot of fun, and that also influenced a lot of the action in some more modern role playing games that I enjoy a lot. And so I, I just feel that you know, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for, I mean, in in this day, I mean, somebody would have made something that would have inspired it, but. God of War is really what put stylish action on the map, and stylish action has <clears throat> has has even games that aren't stylish action that are really good. There's I I can see influence, and I I, I really like mm-hmm. it. Uh, um, I agree with you entirely, and this was also the <clears throat> era of the uh, TEs, um, and God of War was like the first, mm-hmm. the first not the first game to do a QTE. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, fir- it the first game to do best. Yeah. the first game game to do quick time events were games that actually used quick time, which is why right. it's a quick time event. <laughs> uh, that just, that would have been games while you were... like huh, what? No, go ahead. Finish your statement. I'll, I'll, I'm just anecdoting. Yeah. That that would have been games like um, yeah, uh, like uh, uh, crap, um, like crap, Phantasmagoria. Oh. Um, uh, uh, that game that you liked that I was too young to figure out very well because I didn't really know what was going on because you you had better language comprehension at that time than I did. Um, uh, but people would walk. It was a, it was vampires and stuff, and people would walk into a certain room, and you had to activate a certain trap to because yeah, they were gonna yeah 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 um, yeah. Gah. The Sega Dreamcast era games. No, older than no. that. It was, we had it on Sega CD. Oh, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Oh, because mm-hmm. it was the same time we would play Sewer Sharks. Yep. Because um, Sewer Sharks kind of had some of the same stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. I don't remember what it's called. It yeah, it doesn't really matter, but it's... But uh, yes, um, mm-hmm. to throw this out there, uh, you were referring to um, mm-hmm. um, who was pioneering uh, stylish action. Mm-hmm. It's worth noting. Now, Devil May Cry obviously is a less popular series than God of War. It's mm-hmm. still obviously a huge series, mm-hmm. uh, but God of War definitely got bigger quicker. Mm-hmm. Devil May Cry preceded God of War by four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I was thinking it was a little bit older, but is um. Uh, well, uh, when you think about the time frame, I mean, like that literally put them on. Well, it wouldn't have put them on a different system, um, <clears throat> but I mean, like that's a long time in in video game development years. I mean, for like think about if that's enough time for a game to inspire another game. You give someone an idea for another game, full production of that game, mm-hmm. release that game, and be thinking about a sequel, and that's how long it was in between those two. And I just find that really interesting because it kind of makes me think. It makes me wonder. Obviously, a game like God of War was probably in the works, mm-hmm. but you gotta wonder with that kind of a of, of a difference. Without Devil May Cry, would God of War be the same game, or would we have ended up with another? You know, I mean, a, a, another more just a like god of war but like lore croft but with you know in in uh mythology yeah <laughs> greek lore croft greek lore croft mm-hmm. which by the way i'm into that's my thing mm-hmm. yeah um, interesting uh, yeah I, I i didn't realize it was such a big gap or i might have no no i'm, I'm still gonna say oh i was gonna say changed, god of war yeah, yeah. and the, the yeah. reason why is because god of war is definitely what put stylish action on the map it definitely um, is, uh, and it's just it's yeah. just better than the Devil May Cry series. It's just noticeably mm-hmm. better. Each installment, like if you compare one to one, two to two, three to three, the reboots, even the reboots, and I know you're not a fan of the 2018 God of War. Mm-hmm. 2018? 2016. 2016. Mm-hmm. 2016 God of War, I know you're not a fan, but if you compare 2016 God of War <clears throat> to 20, what is it, 2020 Devil May Cry, the reboot, uh, well, more or less the reboot, it's a better game. Um, every single installment to go down the line, just a better game. Mm-hmm. Devil May Cry was fine. It's a lot of fun. I have zero replay value mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned because mm-hmm. I'm not like those, those kind of games. It's like Bayonetta. Bayonetta and Devil May Cry, the replay value is, hey, you got a B rank on this level and an A rank on this level, but why don't you keep grinding until you get an S rank? No, absolutely not. That's boring as balls. Devil May Cry uh, shows like, the, and Bayonetta. Bayonetta is the same. Um, uh, both of those games is a very Japanese take on uh, on stylish action which is why I think God of War put it on there I think Santa Monica did a better job than K2 
Capcom? Who made God or Devil May Cry? It was Capcom, is Capcom? It? <clears throat> I don't know. But um, uh, uh, Capcom. It's Capcom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Which, but, by the way, Bayonetta is better than Devil May Cry. I've said what I said. Mm-hmm. Oh, probably. Well, you're just saying that because our hair flies away. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, sh- 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 um, oh, yeah, but, and so, yeah, it was, it was a very. Which, I mean, there's not like there's an obscene amount of replay time, uh, or replay, time, re- replay possibility for the Devil May Cry. It just seems like it has more content. What, um, Devil May Cry. God of War. I was thinking about Devil May Cry. That one doesn't, that, that one's not super replayable either. I mean, just because play it again and it's fun. Um, right. uh, which is the same kind of replay time you would get out of, um, uh, uh out of, um, uh, <clears throat> out of uh, out of Devil May Cry, um, uh, say, hey, did you have fun playing it? We'll play it again. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much all it is. But it's just, I, I, I think with the scoring system and all the other stuff, it made it made Devil May Cry into a very arcadey, um, uh, and that in in the here in the United States we were we were not we weren't done with arcades or arcadey games. But we, the, there are plenty of those. We wanted something with more. The, to make it arcadey, you have to make it, you know, uh, floatier and cartoonier. And you can't really, you don't make realistic, gritty arcade games. You know, like they don't mm. exist. They can be bloody, they can be adult themed, but they, you, they're not realistic. You can't do it for some reason. I don't know why. You right. should be able to. But um, it, 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 less accessibility. Yeah, <clears throat> but and so they they put they they put that in uh, God of War. Uh, it was like, it wasn't floaty. Uh, well, at least you, well, no. you know, it, it was kind of floaty. You'd stay in the air forever, but is it floaty in that way? But it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, Devil May Cry is floaty, and this game isn't. It's um, uh, and so it, it wasn't any of that. Um, uh, it was weighty. It was heavy, and it was it. You know, it had had more kick, and that made it that 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 made it. I don't know if it necessarily made it better. It may have made it better, but it made it more. It, it made it different from anything else, and that's what made it popular. And that's why that's why the stylish action genre has continued, and it led to actually my probably my favorite stylish action game. Um, uh, I really enjoyed um, the Force Unleashed. Mm, nah, mm. I didn't. I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. It was fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but I could not stay interested in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get why you liked it. I get why other people <clears throat> liked it. I never even picked up the controller after. Like, I eventually went back and played it like years later. <clears throat> but like when you were playing it, I don't even. I I remember vividly watching you play it <clears throat> and going and reading a book. I just didn't care about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would enjoy it today better than I enjoyed God of War, but that was when I was super autistic about Star Wars. Oh, wow. That mm-hmm. sounds really familiar, like now. Yeah. Um, anyways. Well, I, I, I would still be super autistic about Star Wars if it wasn't for Disney. This is fair. Mm-hmm. They did kind of ruin all that. Mm-hmm. That being said, man, I, I, I don't want to get off on a tangent, so let's not start talking about this, but man, the book of Boba Fett's really good. Really? It's really good. Ev- it's just so good. Everything I've heard about it like not just people saying and by the way this is trash people talk about like people just saying hey look the book of Boba Fett does this and this and this and this even people who are excited about it is like oh, oh it sounds no. awful no 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 it's great I love mm-hmm. it it's really well done let's quit talking about it okay. oh. uh, I w- well done doesn't mean I've... good well, this is true everything That's Disney good. does is well done none of it's good well Cinderella's pretty great yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I said, I said my number four first. You say your number four first, or my number five first. You say number four okay. first. My number four first. Going back into the same thing. Now, if I was gonna pick my favorite, the, my favorites list, what would go on number four? <clears throat> would probably be. Uh, uh, would probably be Modern Warfare Two, if I was doing a favorites list. You know, mm-hmm. I really struggled. With mm-hmm. whether or not I was going to put a mm-hmm. Call of Duty game on this list, I um, wouldn't have put a Call of Duty game on this list. But I just have so many, you know, fun, memorable hours 
I'm uh, playing that game split screen. I'm uh, doing all that. That's the only reason. Why. Absolutely. Oh, for yeah. sure. Um, and Modern Warfare Two. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't think we, you and I, you and I probably put the most hours into Modern Warfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, no. Modern Warfare Two, definitely. You want? Well, I don't know. I don't know which one I would have done more. Um, and I think it's kind of like I think I'm probably being a little bit pretentious. No, I'm not. I did this on purpose. I did. I had genuine thoughts about this. I was going to say like I don't know if I'm being pretentious by <clears throat> avoiding putting a, a Call mm-hmm. of Duty game on here when I clearly pay, play a ton of Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm going to be honest. When I was thinking of my top five games of all time, Call of Duty didn't come into my mind until after I'd written down five games, and that's the reason why I don't have a Call of Duty game on mm-hmm. my list. I had already written down all five games before I thought about Call of Duty. But if mm-hmm. I had to put one in the top five. I'm gonna I'm gonna veer off of you a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and I'll let you talk about Modern Warfare Two if you'd like to. Well, I was but gonna I give my actual like top four, <clears throat> too. <laughs> Your actual top four? Yeah, yeah my, oh, my okay. actual number four. Yeah, because if I was doing my favorites, it would that would that would want all in there, but it it uh, it didn't make the list because I that's not how I did my list. That's how I should have done my list, but it's not how I've I did got my list. I've got two lists. I've got two lists too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just interject and say that the um the in my opinion. The one that if I had to play over and over and over again, mm-hmm. just because I think about the storyline, <clears throat> the actual campaign, mm-hmm. the best one is Black Ops for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Black Ops had an incredible storyline. I do not give a crap how much people hate on it. It's so good, and I'll leave it be. Go back to what you were saying. Okay. So this isn't even my favorite game in this series, um, uh, but I was thinking about you know games that I liked, and then, you know, what? so what game is it that put... Um, uh, you know that put epic role playing games all on the map and really started getting everyone going for it. Uh, this isn't my favorite epic role playing game. This isn't my favorite game in this series, but this is the game that put them on the map on on the on the mainstream map and got everybody interested in it and wanted to do it and doing that. So I had to put for number four, Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion. That is a very good choice, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think I, I'll, obviously I've got an Elder Scrolls game on this list. I don't mm-hmm. think there's any yeah. um, doubt about that. I but I really battled mm-hmm. about which one to put on the list because I had mm-hmm. to dig deep down, um, and think about which one do I have the best memories with. And I'm not going to say which one's mine because mine's not until higher on the list because I put it mm-hmm. very high on my list. Yeah. Um, Oblivion. I think the only thing that ruined that for me is the PS3 bug, um, because specifically if you were a console player, um, there was a bug in these games that the further you got, the higher level you got, and the harder things became. It began to bog the game down, and things would slow way down. So I beat the game, and I did an insane amount of the side missions, but I was going to do all of them. It actually became unplayable. Um, towards the end, I, I played um, so, extremely little on PS3, so I never saw that. <clears throat> yeah, I, and I played exclusively on PS3, and I mean, I beat the game. Mm-hmm. I did all, I t- all the major side quests, um, but by the time DLC came out, and I did do the DLC, it had added so much more to the game. Um, it just really bugged it down. And there was apparently a patch that came out at some point. I don't know if it's because with our PlayStation 3 at that time, living with mom and dad was never properly connected to the internet. I don't know. But I never got to install it. So there's at least a few side missions that I never completed. And I think it just left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Still like a flawless game as far as I'm concerned. But I think that puts it, I think that gets it knocked out of my favorite Elder Scrolls game just for that reason. Mm-hmm. But an incredibly great pick. It's a yeah. phenomenal game. <clears throat> Well, I wouldn't necessarily think it's my favorite Elder Scrolls game. You know, let's throw that out there. Um, uh, so my favorite Elder Scrolls... Man, there's so many things I liked about Oblivion. Uh, so many things I liked about Morrowind that they didn't have in Skyrim. But I still have to give it to Skyrim just because mm-hmm. there's so much to do in it. And it plays so much better for the most part. And I think this is a problem <clears> with making <throat> a top five list is we are going to end up picking mostly current era games. Or, or, or you know darn near current in the grand scheme of video games as a history current era because obviously we can do more stuff i mean there's more stuff available it makes them better it just does we're not going to sit here and be like well the games were better back when you only had three buttons i mean like yeah there were 
fine things that, that people did and great accomplishments people made with a three button Sega Genesis controller or a six button Sega Genesis controller and we're all very proud of you congratulations but I mean you can't hold a candle to when someone makes a really really good PS3 PS4 PS5 game and you know or Xbox 360 and whatever I mean there's so much more you can do so if you have a good idea and a good studio you're gonna make a better game than every Sega Genesis game that's ever been put out content wise <clears throat> So mm-hmm. it's a little unfair, but it's just the way that it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I struggled with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've made this list. I have three sticky notes in front of me with top fives on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to say, when I look down, like kind of come back to like memories, what do I have? <clears throat> like, what really made the game so good in my mind? Generally for me, I kind of equate it to excuse me the nostalgia factor of that game mm-hmm. um because like that that's what makes me think of it right off the bat yeah. number four for me for that reason has to be the third age of middle earth mm. mm-hmm. yeah it's um just, hold, hold on the third age of middle earth or the third age uh, i think it's just the third age right yeah the, i just said the third age, th- of, middle third age of middle earth is 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 a uh uh is a uh oh, crappy that's a crappy game yeah this the yeah. third age is crap <clears throat> no, 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 no 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 which one hold the, on th- the third age is good it was the ps2 role-playing game that was based on final fantasy 10 or s- probably yeah um uh that was that that was um uh uh that was the third age the third age of middle earth was a um uh, uh a tactical um a real-time strategy Yes, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. just some... F- this was during the era of... Um, so what was the Star Wars equivalent that you loved? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that game was fun, and that was... Something. What the heck was that game called? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> well, you're also wrong, because you're definitely thinking of the Battle for Middle-Earth. So, no, so there's Battle for Middle-Earth, there's War of the Ring, and then I thought there was, I thought there was like five... Because the War of the Ring well, was one too. War of the Ring, War of the Ring, or are you thinking of War of the North? Hold on. I think you're thinking of War of the North, which was crap. War of the Ring PC. Yeah, right there. Lord of the Rings, War of the Ring. Um, came out in 2003. War of the Ring. Work on a both. Third Age of Middle Earth Google. was a video. Okay, so the Third Age, the Third Age of Middle Earth links to the Third Age game. What? So there must not have been Third Age of Middle Earth. The War, um, uh, the War of the Ring is a board game, my dude. Huh? Uh, th- there, there's two. There's a board game. Look, w- War of the Ring. PC, look right here. Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Ring now. video game, uh, pre- published by Sierra. <laughs> oh my goodness! November fourth, yeah. two thousand three. Oh, wow. I remember when this game came out, and I was thinking about this game. There was, I don't. Yeah, there's two of them. Uh, there's two versions yeah. of it. One has an elf holding an orc's head. One has an orc holding an elf's head. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely wasn't talking about this game because I don't remember this at all. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I've never mm-hmm. seen this before. Really, it, they, they had it at Walmart several times. So I kept wanting to get it, but then Dad didn't like it because of the version with the orc holding an elf's head. Understandably. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, orc. But yes, okay. So obviously, we're in case you haven't figured this out, we're mm-hmm. giant nerds and we're giant Tolkien nerds. Um, and thankfully, a lot of other people who are giant Tolkien nerds decide that they were going to make video games, and there's a ton of really good Lord of the Rings video games, and there's a ton of really bad Lord of the Rings video games. Um, So there's some nostalgia factor for, honestly, a bunch, uh, because I struggled to not put Conquest on this list. Um, But if I have to be honest with myself, Conquest is a complete rip-off game. Mm -hmm. Um, A a deliberate rip-off, which is fine. Don't care. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was derivative, yes, it but it wasn't a ripoff. It was made by the same studio. Well, 
Well, I guess that's it was made by the same people. Uh, I guess you can call. I guess you can really call another ripoff. Yeah. It's the same people making it. But I mean, they. I mean, like they almost look like they just made some new maps and just reskinned Star Wars people, um, mm. because it's 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 the same thing. Yeah, they remade um, the good battle Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the good Battlefront, the best Battlefront, let's mm-hmm. be honest, because even that one was better than the sequel. Mm-hmm. Um, I struggle with putting that one on this list because obviously you and I have a lot of fond memories of that game. Mm-hmm. Replay value is pretty high because you can kind of alter how it goes as you go. Mm-hmm. Um, M- multiplayer, other than strictly co-op, other than strictly co-op, any multiplayer has a high replay value if it's a good game. By nature, excuse me. Um, obviously, that's just kind of a layup, and that's the reason why I'm trying to avoid... Excuse me, that kind of stuff for the, in general. Mm-hmm. Kind of how I, one of the reasons why I put Call of Duty out of the list because the only replay value of Call of Duty, for me, is the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Um, not that that's bad, but in a in in a list like this, it's kind of, it's I'm kind of keeping it off. Well, heck, I've not even um, touched the campaign for Cold War or Vanguard. Vanguard campaign's okay. It's mm-hmm. not great. It's just doable. It's fine. Mm-hmm. No big great ending. I mean, it's kind of lackluster, and they did fine. That's the only thing that makes Call of Duty anymore. campaigns good is the big great ending. Yeah, the big ridiculous over the top holy crap ending. Mm-hmm. And Vanguard was like, "This guy's bad. We're gonna set him on fire with a lighter." Okay, I mean that's fine. You can do that, but I mean that's how the first one should have been, not the twentieth <clears throat> installment. Mm-hmm. Make a big boom. Make him be a robot. I don't care. Just do something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Now, like, set him on fire with a lighter, and then have him do the Denethor. That'd be all right. It would be, but he just kind of moved around for a second and fell over. It's kind of lame. Uh. Which, by the way, is the reason why. Go- <laughs> go- <laughs> it's the reason why Ghost has the best campaign ending, even though it's stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't that the one where you kick a dude through a glass ceiling? No, that's uh, Modern Warfare Three. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the glass ceiling. <clears throat> but yeah, this one's like, he's almost dead. He's not quite dead. We're underwater. Now we're underwater. He got shot underwater. He's back above the water with a knife. He's holding your brother. You shoot him. Jets fly over the air and battleships roll up. Like, perfect. This is Call of Duty. <laughs> and then uh, Kevin Spacey rips your arm off. Oh, that's a different one again. Yeah. <laughs> Press F. <laughs> All right, best let's, worst let's Call of Duty on. ever. Let's, let's, let's move on before we start before we start getting even more ridiculous. Okay, so for me, number three was the hardest. Yes, so, I've marked it out three times. Yeah, and while I say it was the hardest, I I went, knew so bad or knew so little what to put in number three. I filled out number one and number two, so I filled out number one, number two, then number five, then number four, then waited, and then filled out number three. I think number three was the one that I... I don't know what order I put it down in, but I know that I scratched it out twice. <clears throat> yeah. So if I was going to... This stuff may not be dry, so I still smell this marker, and I'm above my desk. It's weird. But um, uh, the um, uh, number three, if I was picking my favorite game to go in this spot, number three would probably be either Dark Souls 3 or Yandorian Tales 3. If I was picking mm. my favorite game, one of those would go into that slot. Um, but I, well, heck, I could even put Mask of Eternity in there. Um, uh, but you, you have more of an attachment to that game than I do. Mm-hmm. But that's not what I put there because I'm not putting in my favorite game. I'm putting in what game has inspired, you know, or you know, what what game? What are the games that made the best games possible? That makes them the greatest games because you know reasons. Uh, just like World War One made World War Two possible, and it was the Great War. Exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> the better war. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, uh, so for number three, I put down Gauntlet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I would have just as well said Diablo in that slot, but you're fine. The Gauntlet's older. <laughs> the Gauntlet is older. Yeah. It is older. And, and it's not older in the same way that, that Devil May Cry was older, right? Like, I would, you know, I, I would say that Gauntlet, yeah, Gauntlet did put it, on, is what put that, you know, kind of deal on the map, the isometric looking deal. And then there's so many even non-isometric games that are inspired by that. Like, one of my, 
one of my current favorite co-op games is Warhammer Vermintide, and it uses Ooh. the characters from Gauntlet. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, wow. there's inspirations everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that th- this is, it seems like your number three is more of like a tip of the cap kind of a <laughs> answer, but yeah. I'll agree. But I can't say you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't always just want to pick the origin, mm-hmm. which in this case, if you invented a genre, which mm-hmm. kinda, then yeah. yeah, sure. But I still want. I mean, obviously, Diablo still has done it best. The Diablo has still mm-hmm. done it the best, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, Di- yeah. Diablo did it best. Um, uh, and but the thing is, though, Gauntlet is different, right? Because Diablo has its own, like you know, Diablo-like games. You know, like some we 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 loved our Diablo like games. We liked Titan Quest and we liked um, mm-hmm. uh, Fate. Um, <clears throat> you know, but those were Diablo likes. Gauntlet did inspire Diablo to make Diablo, but it's a different thing. So now Diablo inspired, or so Gauntlet inspired Diablo to make Diablo likes, but Gauntlet also inspired, you know, a, bu- a bunch of other, you know. <laughs> A bunch of other different stuff. So I mean, Gauntlet has to be the one, you know, for in this case. <laughs> That's fair. Mm-hmm. I can't really argue with you, and I have never played enough of that to really give any insight. But that's mm-hmm. a fair answer. That's mm-hmm. a really fair answer. Yeah, especially for like number three. I almost put down. One, I forgot the name of it, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't put it down. I liked it better than Gauntlet. Um, uh, but I still had to go to Gauntlet because I remember the name. Um, uh, but also fair. I think Gauntlet inspired this game. But it was Alien something. Um, uh, and it was. It, it was more fun than Gauntlet because it was, uh, it, it was an isometric alien game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't like, uh, like from like Ripley, aliens. So not the Geiger. So not the Geiger alien. Yeah, yeah. But it was. Oh, okay. it, it was. It was alien. The, the alien was in the name of it, but it wasn't that alien. We got you. Um, okay, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Let's see. But it, it was. It was the one that really started making them into. No, it wasn't a bullet hell either, which bullet hells are oftentimes fun. But, um, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, cause I think, cause Gauntlet inspired that genre, which inspired the bullet hell genre, which inspired scrolling bullet hells. And that's how we got games like Raptor and all that. I, I think mm-hmm. Gauntlet inspired Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. It's mm-hmm. a hot take. <laughs> was Gauntlet before Raptor? Surely it was. No. So Raptor is pretty darn old. Yeah. So I'm trying to find. Yeah, they're they're showing the Gauntlet Four was 1993. Oh <laughs> wow! Really? First Gauntlet, 1985. First. Oh, wow, I didn't realize it was that old. <laughs> Holy yeah. Cow. <laughs> Gauntlet absolutely inspired all of these. I will say I do have Raptor Call of Shadows as an honorable mention, as I'm sure you do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know you do. Um, as my, my um, as my fake favorite game of all time. <laughs> fake favorite game of all time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did put the hours in. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number three is a bit of a layup because I didn't know where to put it. Um, but I have to put down the original Uncharted game. Mm-hmm. Now, I have this for two reasons. Um, now, obviously, Uncharted isn't an original idea. It's like you've split Laura Croft and Indiana Jones down the middle, and that's how you get Uncharted. And mm-hmm. then just make your protagonist <clears throat> make random quick whips and, um, you know, all that kind of nonsense. And I think I respected the game more after I understood their um, death system um, for how you die. Their reasoning isn't that you're getting hit by this many bullets. Mm-hmm. But that your luck, <clears throat> luck is running is out, draining. I actually like that. Um, <clears throat> it makes it, 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 it makes more sense because yeah, you're, like you're not getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always and like so games I, when they give you a play. reason for recovering. Yeah, and there's like a legitimate one, uh, mm-hmm. and that's a legitimate reason, and I'm down with it. Mm-hmm. But the real reason why I picked Uncharted was so like this would make number three mm-hmm. on both of my lists, and here's why: because obviously it's it's from Laura Croft. To a degree, I mean, not 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 directly inspired by, but there's very very similar types of elements um, from a, you know from a thirty thousand foot view of those two games. Mm-hmm. Laura Croft beat it by twenty years, mm-hmm. um, but not twenty. Um, but I there's something to be said 
about how perfect it was as a cinematic video game. And this is in the this is the dead beginning of the PS3 era, like launch title PS3. Mm-hmm. So we're taking, and I mean, we're taking full advantage of of the new system and the engines because I mean, absolutely nothing looked mm-hmm. like that game when it came out. And I mean, and it still it's like it holds up today. Mm-hmm. So when it came out in what 06? Yeah. I, it, it shocked me. I was shocked at how good that game looked. And you and I put a lot of hours into that game, perfecting it and doing all the challenges because it was pretty good. Replay value was decently high. But here's my real reason for picking it. Mm-hmm. That game <clears throat> is so good mm-hmm. and so well done as a concept mm-hmm. that the game that inspired it, which was Laura Croft, got remastered in the style of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why I say that one is such like it's such a great standalone game. And like it was when it came out, there weren't other games like this. Um, but now after you get it, clones came out immediately. I can't remember the name of the one really crappy middle. Like it was the same thing, but it was like in the Middle East or whatever. Yeah. Um, clones came out right away. All of them were garbage because they're just they just didn't have that naughty dog magic, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, and the sequels, I, I think this is a kind of a this might be a hot take. Every single sequel improved on the previous, and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong because of some random reasons, and that's fine. But you're wrong. They've in all gameplay. Off the original. In oh. gameplay, yes. <laughs> Storyline, it's kind of hard to top that first one because I mean, like, mm-hmm. yeah. wow, what a great story, what a great twist, what a great concept, what a great reason for starting, what a great reason for ending. It's a perfect story. Mm-hmm. And the and the, made a great movie. And the continuation of Drake's story as mm-hmm. as it goes through with the 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 four games um uh is pretty good and the continuation of his story um it, like <laughs> him his personal story of his mm-hmm. life you're mm-hmm. chuckling because you hate it and that's fine no no because um, because <laughs> i insisted that there was four there's five uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no that's not <laughs> as someone who owns the game you're referring to no uh, there's not mm-hmm. well yeah let's see i i have two reasons though two very specific reasons why an uncharted game will never make it to my favorite list as much as i loved playing uncharted would you like to hear those two reasons i'm going to whether i want to or not that's true <clears throat> reason number one neil reason number two Druckmann. i hate neil Druckmann. he's my yeah. least favorite person in the world and he ruined him. He ruined those games. Here's how bad of a person... Okay, I have this. Here's how bad of a person Neil Druckmann is. The Uncharted game series was created by a woman. A woman made the game the way that this woman wanted the game to be made. And then Neil Druckmann came along and fired the woman because she didn't make the game feminist enough. Yes, and that's <laughs> Amy Henning. I, I don't remember her name. Amy but, Henning. It's Amy uh-huh. Henning. I'm, yeah, I, just, I Hold on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like now, that, that, yes. that makes me so mad. <laughs> yeah, that guy sucks. Um, he absolutely sucks. So, for the record, she mm-hmm. is an absolute superstar. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you ever dove into any of her stuff. I have a tiny bit, but I mean... You think about her top three games, mm-hmm. it's Uncharted, mm-hmm. uh, Jack and Daxter, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but um, uh, would you like to guess her third most notable game? Because I uh, looked into this the other day and it's interesting. Was it with Naughty Dog? It. Uh, I don't remember if this is a Naughty Dog game, to be honest. Okay. Then but I mean, she was with Nintendo and Naughty Dog throughout the whatever. Okay, then I don't know then. Legacy of Cain. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so have you noticed that there's only two good female game makers, and those two are the two best game makers of all time? Oh, yeah. Her and Roberta <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Roberta Williams. No, I knew where you were going with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that it, it is. he's a piece of trash for that, um, mm-hmm. hands down. He's also a piece but of trash for say- Last of Us 2. Yeah, I, I'm okay. Okay, I'm gonna. This is off topic, but uh-huh. you are much more of a. You know what? I'm taking a stand on this because I don't believe this thing because of this. I'm not gonna even watch this thing or play this game, even if it's good, because I have a, you know, like I have a moral stance on it or a personal stance on it. Yeah. And I don't have quite the moral backbone. <clears throat> I'll play this game just to see if they're good. <clears throat> I watch, you know, I watched the Mandalorian and I watched the, the Book of Boba Fett. Um, whatever. Oh, I watched the Mandalorian That's up until I... they fired Gina Carano. 
up until yeah you see that's what i'm saying yeah i watched past that i was very upset with that i still want to see where it was going so that that's what i'm mm -hmm. the, what you just said is the point i'm getting yeah. i'm getting here <laughs> i refuse mm -hmm. to play the last of us 2 mm -hmm. i will not play that game and i think it's one of the first one of the first times i've taken hard hard stance like that i mm -hmm. will not play that game there's no chance Oh yeah. Sp no speak speaking of will or will and or will not play, um. Uh, uh, so here you go. Uh, so Sony Santa Monica. Um. Uh, I hate what they did with God of War. That is the gameplay changes. The, the 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 new God of War. I hate the gameplay changes they made to it, and I hate that you except for in a few cutscenes when it's vital that you do so. I hate that they made you not feel like a god anymore. You just feel like a dude uh, who's a little bit bigger than the sum of the people you're fighting. Um, uh, and so I, I despise a lot of those things. But I will say that, um, and while I, I do like a lot of the changes they made to Kratos as far as his personality and stuff, because those are reasonable changes that would have made and there was fantastic character development. I Over time hate... with age, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it doesn't it makes it, it makes actual sense. I hate the reason why they did it, but all that said, if Ragnarok is not a PS5 exclusive, if if, if it releases for PS4, I'm probably gonna play it. <laughs> so here's the thing. And you and I have had this discussion mm -hmm. several times. You yeah. hate the game. I love the game. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to address the reason why you can't stand it and why I'm very upset with them. But that's mm -hmm. not going to stop me from playing the game. Mm -hmm. You're referring to the statements released by the the head <coughs> person on the game. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Which, by and the way, I, I hated the gameplay before I knew that. I'm going to put that out there. <clears throat> that's fair. Yeah. I... Like the gameplay, I, I think something had to be done. Um, I do like the idea that they changed it because it was a big gap in between our last God of War game and this God of War game. There's a big gap, and something I, I, I appreciate the idea of, of um, uh, you know, evolve or die. Um, so I'm accepting of it. Uh, it's uh, what I've loved, what I've played the crap out of another Call of Duty, or Call of Duty, another God of War clone just with modern technology. Yes, I would have played the crap out of it. I would have had a ton of fun. It would have been great. Not, I wouldn't have complained about it. But I respect their decision on the gameplay. I love their decision on the story. I don't think they could have done a better job with the story because um, it's great. It's absolutely great. <clears throat> and if you're about to argue it, shut up. I, it's great. So I, 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 th I think making him Loki is, is a little stupid, but besides that, like, <laughs> no, I'm fine with it. I'm yeah, okay no, no, with no, it. no uh, yeah, I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem with it because I played it and didn't go, oh come on, that's retarded. I played, it, I went, okay, like, uh, okay, <laughs> sure, why not? Whatever. <laughs> Here is the point. Mm -hmm. Now that we have mm -hmm. Ragnarok's, Ragnarok's happening, mm -hmm. it's a game that's going to come <clears> out. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. in Ragnarok we get a full blown to the you know. Full, completely tilted God of War from from the perspective of Kratos' experience. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, okay, this game was the wind-up. It gave you the story. It was a slow start because it needed to be a slow start if it was going to be a reimagining of him as a person. All right, here's Ragnarok, and now he's a monster. Mm -hmm. Then I forgive all of their sins of the first game, and I chalk it up to one guy trying to virtue signal, which mm -hmm. I hate. Yeah. I hate it, mm -hmm. but... Everyone's doing it for the sake of doing it. I don't agree with it. I think you're a pile of trash for doing it. Mm -hmm. But you got overpowered or didn't care and were just virtue signaling. And you were doing all this as a wind-up to make him a monster. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, in that moment, 2016 God of War becomes one of the greatest God of War games of all time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They did get a new team for this game, so it's very possible. That's what I'm, that's what yeah. I'm getting at here. Mm -hmm. If they wind up and make him a monster in Ragnarok, then I think that this is a long play, a very mm -hmm. long play, mm -hmm. and it makes it one of the greatest games of all time. Period. That's sure. just where I'm at. Yeah. If they do that, <clears throat> mm -hmm. right, if they do that, then I will say no matter how good Ragnarok is, 2016 yeah. becomes better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this too. I, I, have, I have to throw, throw this out there. 
uh, I do applaud them for trying something new, especially something they had so little experience with and trying to get it to work with God of War 2016. I applaud them for trying because I, I, I hated the gameplay, but they tried something new and that's great. You know, that you stepped out of your comfort zone and tried something new. I don't, you know, I, I don't fault them necessarily for the game being bad because they didn't know it was going to be bad. Um, uh, and the, so, so I, I don't have, have an issue with that. I do have a slight issue with it in that they very much modeled it over the new Assassin's Creed games. And everybody knows that those are trash. They are pretty trash. <laughs> and they that's what they modeled the game after. <laughs> it's yeah, like, come on, guys. Trash. You knew this was bad. <laughs> they are pretty trash. I'm not going to defend that. Anyways, what's your number two game, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or I guess it's me, isn't it? Do I? Do I yeah, because I do even numbers. Right? We'll go for it. Yeah, okay. So if I was to pick a favorite for number two, I would probably put Elden Ring in the number two slot. Um, uh, cause, the, but that's not, I'm not picking my favorites. And so I'm picking again, you know, the gay, great games. And so mm -hmm. it is just original Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. even pick Demon Souls for it, even though it came first, because I enjoyed playing Demon Souls. I did that. A lot of people loved it, but it's not the one responsible for putting it on the map. Dark Souls was so Dark this Souls is it true. is. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> my favorite because my number one slot is a crumb game mm -hmm. um so i won't go into detail about yep. too much of that except for to say mm -hmm. you're right on both accounts mm -hmm. um elden ring is the perfected version of a from game mm -hmm. um they've simplified and are continuing to simplify multiplayer um they've embraced an open world design flawlessly i'm impressed with the, the it's a slight transition because obviously the dark souls games, soulsborne games um aren't on the rails necessarily um because there is a little bit of um there's a little bit of of, of, of freedom to some degree mm -hmm. but it's not an open world and Elden Ring is an open world and it feels like an open world and it is just so it's a perfect transition um, I <clears throat> completely embrace the things that some people are upset with like saying like oh why are there like 15 different Erd tree bosses why is this enemy appear, appear 16 different times well screw you it makes perfect sense why that enemy would appear a bunch of different times in this open world of course it does <clears throat> it's a slightly more common tough enemy you're a piece mm -hmm. of crap why do we have all these different Erd tree bosses? Well, first of all, several of them are different. And second of all, of course there'd be a bunch of them. There's a bunch of minor Erd trees. I completely agree with their decision. It was a great decision. I don't mm -hmm. know why people are upset about it. Yeah. Um, Reskin bosses are only a problem for big bosses. Right. And they aren't. And there are no reskins of big bosses. You have mm -hmm. multiple, insanely memorable, diverse, and great big boss fights in this game. Mm -hmm. Someone's like, well, if you really break it down, there are only like 19, you know, uh, unique bosses in the game. I'm like, well, then it's great that there's like 100 because they killed the way they presented them. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's perfect, and I refuse to talk bad about it because I think they did it in a way that actually makes sense, and I'm down with it, and I want them to do it again. Please do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I it, It's great. I agree with that decision very much because it's just it's just flawless. Yeah. Um, and also, the weapon system is fine too. I yep. don't care that you have to like farm and farm and farm to make a super powerful weapon. You're open world. You should be farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think and I'll, I'll here's my favorite thing about Elden Ring is the fact that they're if you look at um uh, if you look at every single FromSoft game, every game that they made, um. Uh, has mistakes and the next mm -hmm. game with the exception of dark souls 2 to dark souls 1 but miyazaki didn't work on that one so it doesn't count um it does uh, not count yeah i mean it doesn't count in this regard some people are gonna say it counts it doesn't count in this regard because miyazaki's the one that that does this sort of thing um uh but it um uh <clears throat> they they make mistakes in every game and they may not get the next game right but you see where they tried to fix that mistake the, in the next game every time. And that yeah. is, like, like, the, like every single time, it's, you know... Like, I think that's why Bloodborne was so fast. 
is because right. man, Dark Souls two, like we screwed that up. We made that way too slow and way too clunky. Let's just go overboard with speed on this one to make up for it. You know, <laughs> this is true. Um, <clears throat> I, I have to say, <clears throat> with the changes from the direct Dark Souls series and Bloodborne evolving into Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, that just makes me like, wow, what is the next From game going to be? Because mm -hmm. this is just like uh, everything. And I don't want to get into it because there's so many little details about what makes it better. But I mean, like the way they introduce your, your you have the fast travel, simpler, uh, mm -hmm. your way to move around a larger <laughs> world via torrent is so much better. Mm -hmm. The lore, oh my God goodness like mm -hmm. when i first started i'm like this isn't going to be as good as dark souls 3 mm -hmm. this isn't going to be as good as bloodborne but then like once you progress further you can actually decipher it from just talking to npcs and reading um you know item descriptions even more than you did in dark souls 3 which dark souls 3 if you paid really good attention you could get the story no mm -hmm. one did and so they didn't get it that's fine <clears throat> but do you know why you i thought the story really get the story <laughs> do you know why i thought the story wasn't going to be as good because dark souls 3 was perfect well, that's part of it, but the other reason is a reason that a lot of people are going to get very mad at me for. I'm not a big Martin fan. He's good. <laughs> he's he's still objectively good. <laughs> he's objectively a good writer. He's a great oh he's a great world creator. Yeah, yeah, I got I got him. Uh, oh. And that's what he was mostly for. So that's the mm -hmm. reason why I was okay with it. He's a good world creator, and that's what his job was here. And you can still tell this is clearly a Miyazaki story. I mean, like, look at the nonsense. It's definitely mm -hmm. Miyazaki. Yeah, but think about this, though. Th 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 think about this, though. Um, uh, uh, so Miyazaki did approach Martin and ask him to help. But did you know that before that he ever approached Martin, he was approached by another author and said, hey, I would like to make a video game with you guys, and they didn't do it. If you say Sanderson, I'm going to be mad. It was Sanderson. No, it was no. Sanderson. <laughs> Sanderson uh, approached the people at FromSoft and said, "Hey guys, I love your games. Um, uh, I've played all of your games. I beat all your games. I have platinum trophies. I love playing your games. They're so much fun. I'd like to do a collab with you guys." Uh, but as of right now, Sanderson is working with some other. He, he, he doesn't say who. He's yeah. working on a video game with somebody. But <laughs> yeah, he is. And if uh, we just make a Stormlight Archives game i'm all mm -hmm. in i'm i'm fine let's let's do it but oh. mistborn is more popular so probably if it's if it's derivative of his other works it'll be from mistborn i've not read probably. it but it's I'll more popular i'll still be okay with it but mm -hmm. i mean let's just be honest stormlight archive is pretty pretty it's, gosh darn great it's pretty good yeah. <clears throat> that's a great pick i should go to mine mm -hmm. yep do it i dare you <sighs> so i needed an elder scrolls game mm -hmm. on this list yep and I was struggling a little bit, and I mm -hmm. think I finally settled on Morrowind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, Morrowind is it was fantastic uh, for reasons I had to pick Oblivion for the greatest game. But yes, <clears throat> that's fair. And I yeah. and I think this is where I have my two list mm -hmm. um, on here. For me, Oblivion, man, it's it's just such a great game. But if I had to pick, Oblivion is is number three for me on the list of Elder Scrolls games. Mm -hmm. Um. Skyrim is probably technically the best. It, what am, who am I kidding? It's the best one. Mm -hmm. um, objectively, it's the best one. Yep. But if I have to boil down all of my all of my memories, and I, I hadn't played an open world game like that before Morrowind. I hadn't at all. Um, I, didn't, not, I had not played an open world game before Morrowind. That game. I'm not sure that I have. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but I know there was nothing like it. Yeah. Um, it introduced remember, me, like, and I loved it so much. Yeah, I had to like look at like oh, I'm looking at my my notes just to know where to go. Like mm -hmm. I had my own notes outside of the game notes. I like it was just following so many different lines. There's so much stuff you could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, that, it was just that was, that was a really magical though. time. Yeah, like that that was that made it better than Skyrim. Th that function was better than Skyrim. In Skyrim, hey, look, here's your marker. Walk towards the marker. Go this way. And Oblivion was the same way. Go this way towards your marker. They didn't have that in Morrowind. Nope. They opened up the map. And they, they put a new area on the map to say, look, here's the area, the rough area that you're going to. And they didn't even always do that. It was like, you got the notes. I said, okay, so if I'm going here, they said, leave town by the east exit. Go till you get to the signpost and head north. From the signpost, head north 
until you come to this. At this point, the entrance to the tombs are, you know, there's some fallen rocks near the entrance to the tombs. And so you went to the signpost, then you went north, then you went till you got to that spot, and then you looked for the fallen rocks and you found the entrance to the tomb. See, That's and fantastic. So, so what you're saying is the point <clears throat> I was about to make that I actually made a little note of next to it on here. Uh -huh. The reason why Morrowind was, was, in my opinion, the best if I had to pick one, mm -hmm. it is like an actual it's like they actually put you in the game if you were your character that is how you would have found it some guy would have been like go here then go here then go west by a tree mm. uh, or <laughs> east by some broccoli <laughs> it's in the middle by the waterfall by the waterfall um, <laughs> you, like that's how you would have done it this is like living a D&D game um, and that's why it was so special um I remember like fighting over in the beginning over whose turn it was to play because we had this installed on your laptop, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember like waiting for my turn to play the game for a couple hours uh, just because it was like, I got to go finish this quest line. Do this thing. I don't think I've ever been, I don't remember a time that I was that obsessed um, with jumping back in because like, I got to go back in so I can do this thing. Um, yeah. Now I'll go back and like I'm gonna play a game. I gotta do some more stuff. I'm gonna get oh, I'm gonna Elder Ring. I've gotta go fight this boss relatively soon. That'll be fun. I'll probably find some stuff to do along the way. I was like up at night, being like I can't wait until I go back and I do this thing. Mm -hmm. Is is just it was a it was a magical game. Um, and I think there if I went back and played it now, obviously the graphics are like terrible. The world's gonna be smaller than I actually remember it being. All that kind of stuff that happens when you revisit an old game. But it's just. It's perfect, and if we don't remake Morrowind and add stuff to it, then I don't know why in the world we're making any games at all. Mm -hmm. Somebody, re I don't think I don't think that image is with Morrowind. They might have, but somebody remade Oblivion. They took all it the looks great. They, they took the sound effects from Oblivion and all the stuff, and then built the world for Oblivion in the Skyrim engine. They had now they have the Oblivion mod for Skyrim, and it's just yeah. Oblivion in the Skyrim engine. And it looks it looks <clears throat> phenomenal. It's um, it's wonderful. If you like, I've seen some side by sides of different um, scenes from the game, and it looks phenomenal. And it's a great idea. Do Morrowind. What are you doing with your life if you're not doing that to Morrowind? It's such a good game. That's my number two. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even think we really need to talk about it too much because <clears throat> we've kind of already talked about all the things for other games um, that, that we would just be rehashing and just saying Morrowind after it. But uh, it's perfect. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing about it at all. Remake it. I'll, I don't care. It's one hundred fifty dollars. I'll pay it. I don't care. Just remake it. Oh, speaking of remaking games, you know that they're remaking um, uh, uh, they're remaking uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah, they the girl they put in charge of it uh, is on the record saying, "I hate Star Wars. It's definitely not my favorite series. I didn't like it at all until the new Disney movies, and I don't care what the fans have to say." Oh, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I'm going to like it when it comes out. <laughs> that doesn't inspire confidence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number ones. So number you have to do your number one. Oh, I have to do number yeah, one you first. Do your number one first. Yep. Okay, so now that we've gotten to number one... Yeah, so I if, I, say, if I'm picking favorites, my number one and your number one will be the same. Probably. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead, now that we've made it through, all the way through the top four, leading to top five, or yeah. to leading to top number one here, mm -hmm. I will go ahead and say, mm -hmm. my actual top five mm -hmm. is Uncharted, mm -hmm. Dark Souls 3, mm -hmm. Elden Ring, mm -hmm. Probably Skyrim, mm -hmm. and then my actual number one, Bloodborne. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, yep. So I just went ahead and picked the best, my favorite from Soft Game, because mm -hmm. if I actually dig dig deep down and go, if I can only play one from Soft Game for the rest of my life, it's Bloodborne. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, it's so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect. It's got mistakes. It's got problems. Elden Ring is technically and objectively better, but Bloodborne is number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, for me, I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a layup because FromSoft is, I love the big, excuse me, low slash high slash, I don't care which one, fantasy. Um, I love Lovecraft. I love the, 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 the design. I don't think, 
any FromSoft game nailed design the way that Bloodborne <coughs> nailed design. Um, mm-hmm. Everything felt mm-hmm. as bleak as it was. Mm-hmm. Everything felt as terrible as it was. The um, the storyline, it was equally as muddy as any other From Software game is, but it's Lovecraftian as heck, mm-hmm. which is very much my thing. Absolutely. Um, I love that they completely simplified the weapons and the, we won't even call them armor, we'll call them garments, because there's mm-hmm. only one armor set in the whole game, <coughs> if memory serves properly. Yep, the, um, uh, oh. crap, the iron Yahargul set. Yeah, yeah, and I don't even, I never wore it, never mm-hmm. cared. Yep. Um, old hunter garb for life, don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, that I love that they simplified the weapon system. I love this. They basically were like, you're a hunter. You shouldn't have a trillion weapons. You should have four or five weapons that you're a master at. Mm-hmm. It's great. Every single little <laughs> aspect is perfect. It's beautiful. The The monsters are ridiculous. They they have very Lovecraftian themes, Lovecraftian monsters. Um, I, 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 there's, there's nothing better. The mm-hmm. DLC was phenomenal. So they basically good. threw you into In's mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's perfect. It's the perfect game, and it's my number one of all time. Not only In's mouth, but um, uh, the Clock Tower. Mm-hmm. That was. I'm trying to think of, that. May, that made it made me think of Lovecraft, but I can't think of anything in particular. But the Clock Tower was, um, was Lovecraftian. It's like it's Lovecraftian. I think it's it was because, because it's kind of like, like an asylum too, and then all the other stuff. Yeah, it? yeah. It's like yeah. a split between like horror, at Red Hook, and mm-hmm. um. Um, Charles Dexter Ward scenery, not so much Charles Dexter Ward, uh, mm-hmm. but like the setting of really felt like that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, and then it's all, beautiful. And, and then a lot of it the, with the the twisting and turning and everything. It may it reminds me of okay, what's the official title? Is it Beneath the Pyramids or uh, it, 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 uh, Among the Tombs of the Pharaohs? I've seen both among titles. I don't know which the is pharaohs. the I don't remember which is the real title. I accept Among the Tombs of the Pharaohs. Okay. <clears throat> well, either way, so I'm, good, uh, so yeah, so good. It's fantastic. Are we talking about the game or the story? Correct. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So yeah. So my favorite game, absolutely, goes to number one splot. Splot. <laughs> N- number one goes to Bloodborne. But yeah, because sure. of how I am doing this list, there's really only one game that could take the number one spot. Hold on. Okay, so you're saying objectively, you're, objectively, this is your objectively number one of all time. Yeah, G- given how my list is going, there's only one game that could be a number one. Like as soon as I knew what I was doing with the list, I immediately wrote number one because I knew what it had to be. Man, I don't know if I have a. Hold on, don't say it yet. I, I mm-hmm. feel like I want to guess what your number one's going to be. <clears throat> you're saying that. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, darn it! I don't know what I would say here. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead. I don't know what I'm going to guess. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It had to be. It had really to be fair. Doom. Doom. That's very fair, though. <laughs> it's, very fair. It's, 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 uh, it's peak John Romero, because mm-hmm. let's be honest, his Daikatan is garbage. Yeah. Um, it's peak John Romero. It's the 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 real revolution of the fps mm-hmm. um i mean like but, but if you think about it it really is i mean like how many how many games have you seen besides worms armageddon don't say worms armageddon mm-hmm. how many games have you seen people like hey want to see if my calculator can play mm-hmm. mega man <laughs> want to see if my calculator can run Bomberman? no they're seeing if it runs doom mm-hmm. which by the way do you know where that or where that came from the yes I mean, but can it run doom <laughs> Um, apparently not. That was like in the '90s when it first came out. Like that was because oh, yeah. that 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 was the '93. Um, uh, th- when it first came out, the the whole thing was, if I'm gonna get a computer, it has to be able to run Doom because I need yeah. to play Doom. So it's like it does this and this and this and this and this. Yeah, but does it run Doom? <laughs> but does it play Doom? Yeah, and that that was what where that came from. Because it, why would you get? Why would you play a game or get a, buy a computer that you can't play Doom on? <laughs> this, by the way, mm-hmm. um, and this it, it, it's this is related. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's directly related. Um, mm-hmm. It has inspired because of that statement. Does it run Doom? Mm-hmm. Some of the greatest Easter eggs of all time. Mm-hmm. There are multiple games that have some crappy computer at a desk somewhere in an <clears throat> office. Doesn't matter. This is a random mm-hmm. thing. 
And there are multiple times an Easter egg has been you go up to this computer and if you type in like the actual exe commands, you can play Doom. Mm-hmm. But I don't mean like it'll run it. You can play the actual full game of Doom mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, as an Easter egg in a game. So I mean, yeah, revolutionary game. Um, yeah, I, I would say if you're if you're arguing for all the points you're arguing you're an actual top five list, yeah, that's fair. That's a mm-hmm. fair answer. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, there's something regarding Doom ports that uh, John Romero actually wound up apologizing for. Hmm. When the Sega Saturn went to make a port of Doom for the Sega Saturn, he kept saying, no, you have to make the game look like this, you have to make the game look like that, and whatever. They had it set up the Sega Saturn, because Sega Saturn was so powerful for its time, they would actually have it running at a smooth 60 frames, which is, sometimes even PCs of the day would lag, and the Sega Saturn wasn't lagging. So mm-hmm. they had it running smoother than the PCs at the time, and looking crisper, having better, like, higher quality stuff in it, and they had a cool soundtrack, a cooler soundtrack, they changed the soundtrack and it was cooler, if I remember correctly. Um, and not mm-hmm. that necessarily better, because you can't really beat the doom but like they the, well, they they added it like more instruments sounding so like it was the same soundtrack but it sounded better it sounded like the actual <clears throat> instruments they had yeah and john romero kept saying no you have to you know you have to do this with it, it has to look like this it has to be this way and they wound up kept knocking it down knocking it down they wound up not even being allowed to make it full screen it had to have like a background and then a screen within a screen um uh and he wound up a, a few uh, like years later. He wound up apologizing for that. I said, "Man, they had the potential to make such a good game, and I didn't let them. And I'm so sorry." <laughs> what a strange dude, John Romero is. Yeah. <laughs> there's an interview with in, with him, and like there's a documentary Netflix did about uh, the history of video games, and there's a couple of interviews with him, and mm-hmm. uh, he is still so freaking strange, mm-hmm. which I'm glad for. <laughs> yeah, it's his hair. If he ever got a haircut, he'd be normal. It's yeah. It's uh, that's very true. His power comes from his hair. <clears throat> so really quickly, how many honorable mentions do you have on this list? Uh, so I tried not to, not to write down any. Uh, but I mean, hmm. honorable mentions. You know, um, the uh, uh, the good Go- the Goodbye Galaxy series. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, yeah, two games. The but three. And <laughs> never figured that it's one out. Seven games, but four. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So like. Four, uh, yeah, four and five are Goodbye Galaxy, but also six because why not? Um, I, I, I don't know. It confuses me, but um, because uh, reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. So Goodbye Galaxy, specific, not just Commander Keen, but the good, the Goodbye Galaxy games, um, is on there. Uh, I mean, like as far as just fun games go, Doom Eternal, uh, it has make it has make honorable mention, mm-hmm. um. Yeah, uh, so Dark Souls 3 didn't wind up on my list, and I wasn't sure where to put it even on my favorites list. Uh, right. But that has to be an honorable mention, um, uh, just because yeah, it's so good. I have more hours in that game than any other game. Um, uh, I think I do, too. Yeah, thousands of hours in that game, um, uh, just because... You know, and I got tired of some of the people that I kept constantly playing with. They kept putting me against all the time. Uh, I got tired of some of those people, but I never, ever burnt out on the game, and that is saying a lot. Um, I mentioned Eandorian Tales, so that's that, that's an honorable mention. Um, no, there, there are a bunch of games that, like, just because of the nostalgia factor, I have to say, put on the list. Hey, remember how great this game was? Like, Chip's Challenge. Um, uh, oh, my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <I'm deep cut>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's just well, stuff a lot like of that, you know. <laughs> a lot of my honorable mentions I won't throw in here because the rest of the Soulsborne games, the rest of the Elder Scrolls games, the rest of the Uncharted games, the rest of the God of War games, blah 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 blah. Long list of things that we could say, like Doom Eternal. Okay, sure, yes, yeah, absolutely. And also, agree. also, I guess if I'm throwing out honorable mentions, uh, <laughs> the Witcher series and the Fallout series are, are all good honorable mentions. Uh, yeah, they, they, they never would have made the top five, but they're good honorable mentions. Witcher 3 does make my top 10, um, mm-hmm. so it's worth throwing out there. I'm going to throw some deep cuts at you that you're going to make little noises at every single one mm-hmm. I mention. Yeah. Uh, so first one, Advance Wars. Mm. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Solid option. Yes. Um, and not, not, not nothing I'd ever put in my top 10, but what a great game. So fun. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Mega Man Battle Network Blue. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Battle Network 3 Blue Edition. Fantastic. I still have that. Some, very, very I have a DS around here somewhere, and Battle Network Blue is stuck in it. <laughs> I'm sure it is. It should mm-hmm. be. Um, and Animal Crossing. Those, those are the two games that are in that right now. <laughs> Animal Crossing. Um, there's a bunch of games I'd like to throw in here. Like Ninja Gaiden, obviously, is something that's worth talking about. But, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not really in the greatest games of all time. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're never going to say anything like Mario Kart. We don't give a crap about those kind of games. It's not really our thing. Yeah, but CTR... <sighs> CTRs is what I was about to say. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's like that's a it's an honorable mention. We don't give a crap about Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll mention two more. I mean, it's fun. Um, <laughs> you vaguely mentioned Castlevania: Lords of Shadows mm-hmm. uh, earlier. Yep. Uh, I'll throw it in there because it's a absolute um, masterclass of gaming. Mm-hmm. It's completely derivative of a bunch of other stuff, and I don't care. It's yep. the reason why it ever makes the top ten. <laughs> Probably your favorite very, stylish uh, action. My favorite stylish action. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Last one I'll mention. Very last one. Mm-hmm. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005. Ah. <laughs> that game wasn't really all that fun. It was just something that we did together while playing music over the Xbox. Yeah. But I don't even... How many mm-hmm. rounds of golf do you think we played on that game? Oh. Um, nearly as many as we played in real life. <laughs> oh, far more than in real life. Um, yeah. That's just a that's just a more of a me and you honorable mention than it is a mm-hmm. real honorable mention. It's it's just a golf game, but we put ugh, a lot of hours into that because mm-hmm. we didn't have a lot of Xbox games, and like the Xbox is the only way that we could listen to a the only way we could listen to the Three Days Grace One X album over and over again. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So now I I would like to add three games to my honorable mention list in that case. Please do. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's say four, because there, there's always more games you can add to it. Well, I'll, I'll see if I can stop with four. So, the four games I'd like to add to the honorable mention list. Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Mm, yes, I had that written down, but I crossed it out. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Darkest Dungeon. Oh, wow. By Red Hook Games. <clears throat> oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never noticed that. Yeah. Uh, Remnant from the Ashes, a big fan. Mm, sure. And Stardew Valley. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That kind of throws out a whole other genre into there to be like, we see you too. You're fine. Yeah, that's that, that's the thing, though, because you think about those games. You know, you have Animal Crossing. You have Harvest Moon. You have, you know, all sorts of games like that, like Slice of Life games. You could almost put Sims in there, but it's a little bit too too far too far in there yeah and yeah harvest moon is the one that, that put that on the map harvest moon is the game as far as that goes but stardew valley is just good i never liked harvest moon i really like stardew valley no i'm saying i didn't care i tried to play harvest moon so many times and i just couldn't get into it mm-hmm. well i think we should stop because we're over mm-hmm. our normal time by a fair bit and yeah. i don't <laughs> think all we do is talk about video games which we're cool with doing but let's not talk too much on wicked content something brooke shut up what'd you say brooke Three games that you didn't mention. What three games didn't I mention? Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Hot take time. All right. Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact. Rats. Ooh. Uh, Vermintide 2. And Broforce. And Broforce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I accept these answers. No one said Monkey Island, but I'll still accept these answers. Oh, well, I forgot about Monkey Island. Good Lord. <laughs> I haven't forgot about Monkey Island. I love Monkey Island. Oh, speaking well, of which, I did will... you keep Loom? No, I'm gonna play it off of. I'm not gonna put a play a CD. I'm gonna download it and play it if I ever play it. Okay, yeah, fine. I didn't keep this three yeah. disc for you though, by the way. Excellent. I appreciate that. But yeah, Loom is so good. The only problem with Loom is this. Uh, you wind up with um, uh, you wind up with eight notes that you can play, and so you have E twice. Once that happens, if you need to use uh, the other E, you cannot use the keyboard. I've not found, at least I've not found a way to be able to use the keyboard. Maybe Shift E or something. But if you press E, you always do the low E. Mm. And if you need to use the high E, you have to click on the loom in the E, po- the high E position. As someone who's not played loom, I have no clue what you're talking about, and we shouldn't discuss it. Music notes. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's a musical game called. Loom. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's well, what what it, what it is 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 you you start off with E. And then you get, I don't know what you get. I don't think it goes in order, so you don't just get F. You get 
another key. And then you wind up playing com and, and your musical instrument is magic, and you play combinations of sounds to make. Yeah, th this this is where Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time, got their um uh, inspiration from. Um, mm, uh, I didn't know that. And, and you you play. Oh, I don't know that for a fact, but it's got to be. You play different musical patterns, and like so, you know, if I play this musical pattern, it does this. Like, for example, you find out that you can dye cloth, white cloth green by playing a certain musical pattern. And then um, uh, there's a giant eagle that keeps stealing people's sheep. And you go out to the sheep when the eagle's about to come, and you play that, and it dyes their sheep green. And the eagle can't see them because they look like grass, and it doesn't take the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining. Yeah, so it's like it's stuff like that. It's like it's, it's fantastic. But then it's done in the style of... You know the, the the walk around and look around style of the because it is an old Lucas Arts game, um uh, so like Monkey Island and stuff like that. It's really good, it's really really good. Hmm. Well, we should leave them with a final thought, and I have one. Mm -hmm. If you are accepting, I will accept your final thought. So these are our final thoughts. We're talking a lot about video games today, mm -hmm. so the final thought should be video game related. Mm -hmm. We just want to leave you guys with Pokemon is trash and Zelda games are horrible. <laughs>